All right, so this Texas voting bill, this is really just bananas. So I'm gonna start by showing you some of the lies. Now, you know that White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, this woman is an extraordinary liar. She she's, should get an award. I don't know, did they give out an award for like greatest liar? Like, she should get the greatest liar award. Maybe, you know, I have a friend who does ceramics and maybe we can put together a little something because this woman, I wanna mail it to the White House. She just cannot say anything true. As I always say, if, if you asked her what her favorite color was, she would say four. Like the woman is completely incapable of saying anything that's true. And the new thing that all the Democrats are doing is lying about all of these voter laws that are happening in these red states, which mostly are about having an ID to vote. That's mostly what they're about, but I'm gonna read you the actual bullet points and tell you what it really is about. But here's Saki on what's going on in Texas right now. He'll also decry efforts to strip the right to vote as authoritarian and anti-American uh, as a, uh, and stand up against the notion that politicians should be allowed to choose their voters or to subvert our system by replacing independent election authorities with partisan ones. And he will highlight the work of the administration against this, the necessity of passing the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, and how we need to work together with civil rights organizations to build as broad a turnout and voter education system to overcome the worst challenge to our democracy since the Civil War. The worst challenge to our democracy since the Civil War. I guess they forgot about that January 6th insurrection that they said was the worst thing since the Civil War, and they completely forgot about 9-11 and everything else. I mean, these people are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, the, the top line there, nobody is stripping the right to vote. So she's saying that in essence, you know, the Republicans are stripping the right to vote from people. Do you think there's any Republican, is there any mainstream conservative Republican, anyone in America that does not want legal citizens to vote? Have you heard anyone say that? Have you heard we're gonna strip the right to vote from legal citizens. Nobody is saying that, but that's what they say over and over. Now, before I get to the specifics that are in the bill, the specifics that they never mention, by the way, and if, if uh, you know, what's his name over at Fox? Who's the Fox reporter that's usually in there? Ducey, right? Peter Ducey, who I think is a fine reporter. Uh, Peter Ducey, if you're, if you're watching this by chance, maybe you wanna ask in tomorrow's press conference, hey, Jen, can you give me the specific thing, the specific quote, in the bill that is the thing that is an effort to strip the right to vote, et cetera, et cetera. Like, cause if it's really all about IDs, then we can have an interesting debate about IDs. Again, you have to show ID to go mini golfing, right? You have to show ID to get a beer and go on a plane. Uh, but it's not just Jen Psaki that's lying. They all lie endlessly. Here's Chuck Schumer this morning. In a democracy, no right is more sacred than the right to vote. And yet across the country, Republican-controlled state legislatures are conducting the most sweeping and coordinated attack on voting rights in generations, fueled by Donald Trump's insidious big lie that the election was stolen. Republican legislatures are not only making it harder to vote, they're making it easier to steal an election. Actually believe that. Donald Trump does the big lie. Everyone knows it's a lie. And now Republican legislatures are acting on that big lie and saying we could steal an election. What is happening to our democracy? What is happening to our democracy? You're quite right, Chuck Schumer. You are happening to our democracy and you are a liar. And we know you're a liar. And you know that we know you're a liar and you keep lying. Uh, he says that these attacks, these are a sweeping and coordinated attack on voting rights. So, okay, I thought Dave, that's pretty, that's pretty intense to say something like that, a sweeping attack on voting rights. So you know what? We're gonna read you some bullet points about what is actually in HB3, this Texas voting law. We've got some quotes here from the National Review. I believe there are nine bullet points, and then we'll jump in and, and unpack. The legislation pushes back against what were supposed to be temporary expedients during the pandemic, such as drive-through voting and 24-hour early voting marathon. So I'm gonna just comment on each one very quickly as we go through this. So, okay, so first off, what they're saying is they're pushing back on some of the things that we had to do because of COVID. So things that we always did, and then we changed some of it because of COVID. So, so far, no, we're not sweeping, taking away anything. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, it explicitly forbids election officials implementing practices not contemplated under the state's election statutes as sometimes happened during the pandemic. Okay, so meaning election officials aren't allowed to do things that they're not allowed to do. 
Okay, under the pandemic, I guess some stuff happened. I don't even know exactly what happened, but I have no doubt that there were some hijinks, right? But basically they're saying we have statutes on how we run elections and you're gonna have to stick to those statutes. All right, we're two for two. Uh, Three, in many counties, it will extend the daily minimum time for having early voting by one hour. Early voting, I thought everybody loves early voting. We're extending early voting. Okay, pretty good, that's three. Four, in certain circumstances, employers are required to give employees time off to go vote. My God, this is evil. This is just extraordinarily evil. Next one. Among other things, it would require voters to write a driver's license number or other identifier on absentee ballots matching the existing voter ID requirement for registering to vote and voting in person. Okay, so if you've got an ID, a driver's license, or some other ID, we're just gonna have some ability to prove that you are you. Ho, <laughs> ho, racist. Uh, then, it would ban public officials from sending out unsolicited mail-in ballots, a common sense provision to keep excess ballots from floating around. So this was one of the things during COVID, people were just sending out ballots all over the place. I got several ballots here. It's just a way of trying to control the amount of ballots going out. Not saying don't send ballots to certain people, right? But we're not gonna have partisan people just send out a gajillion ballots. Uh, next, it would mandate that all voting systems have a paper trail on or before 2026 with a funding incentive for counties to comply early. A paper trail, well that would be pretty good because you know we're used to iPads and touch screens and you kind of press things and does anything really happen? So a paper trail is a little printer that's in the machine that allows you to know afterwards because you have a physical thing, a piece of paper with it's been printed on that shows you that the vote actually counted. Uh, and then finally, for sizable jurisdictions that can easily pull it off, it would require live streaming of voting counting proceedings. So. That sounds pretty good. So then everybody votes, people show IDs, we make sure everyone followed the policies, et cetera, et cetera. And then using this thing that came out about 20 years ago, a webcam, we're gonna stick a little Logitech webcam up in the corner and we're gonna make sure that people aren't, you know, taking big pieces of paper and moving them here and shifting them here and changing things and all sorts of stuff. Guys, did any of that did any of that seem like a sweeping assault on voter rights? Did any of that seem like an assault on democracy? Did any of that seem like the greatest attack since the Civil War or whatever nonsense that crazy woman just said? But these are the people we are dealing with. They don't mind lying about everything because they know the media is not gonna do anything. They know they simply will, not. no, it's not that they won't do anything. They will propagate and promulgate. That's your word of the day. They will promulgate that lie, okay?